All right, guys, welcome back to another video. We are going to be starting the new build. Last piece is coming in and within the week, so figured we'd start getting it together. That way we have two nice rifles to shoot throughout the summer. Uh, warm weather is pretty much here. Mud season's almost over, so the range is uh, no longer a swamp. <laughs> But I'll put what I can of this build up on the channel. I'll try and do a little bit more than the 20 Creedmoor build. But I can only do so much due to YouTube's rules. You know, I'm not monetized, so it, it, you know, it's not like they can unmonetize the, the, the uh, video. But they can strike me, and I don't want that either. But I'll do what I can, show what I can. And... You know, I'll show each piece, I'll put it together, and then show the after. It's pretty much what I was thinking. But, yeah, uh, let's get this show on the road. Alright guys, so the first item I got for the build, like I said, my budget isn't going to allow a Defiance action. I almost went with the Defiance Classic, but it just would have left me really shorting out on the rest of the rifle, you know, because there was two ways I was going to go about it. I was going to go all out on the action, which I know you sh probably should do, and then do like a Boyd stock. Now, nothing wrong with Boyd's, you know, Boyd's, I was going to do a Boyd's at one stock with the adjustable cheek piece and all that, and they look gorgeous. Uh, I have several Boyd stock. The only problem with Boyd's is a lot of the time to get the pure accuracy I'm looking for, or really good accuracy, uh, you know, you've got to bet it. And I really don't want to tackle a betting job right now. And that's kind of why I wanted a chassis. Now, chassis aren't cheap, so I kind of had to split my money around, you know, here and there. So I went with... A quality action that's time proven but isn't up with you know defiance or you know uh, impact precision or you know whatever all those premium uh, the two if I was to go all out if someone gave me you know five grand right now I would probably go with either a defiance actually over defiance I, I would probably go bat a bat action uh, bat is some of the best. Bat or Borden are two of the best you can get. And then I would probably put Defiance third. I mean, honestly, Defiance and Bat you can kind of put in the same category. Um, but I'll tell you, Bat, I have ran several Bat actions and they are... Bat Machine makes a quality action. So, I had to kind of spread the money out a little bit. And I want to give a good shout out to Northland Shooter Supply. They pretty much hooked me up throughout this whole build. If you guys want anything, put together a full rifle, parts here and there, you know, if you just need a few parts for a rifle build you're doing, call Northland Shooter Supply. Now, none of this was given to me. I bought all of this with my, with my own money, you know. Uh, but... Their customer service is amazing. They they're very knowledgeable. Uh, you know, it, it the guy there is amazing. I think it's Jason or James James at um, Northland Shooter Shooter Supply. Now you can get everything there. You can get pre-fit barrels, uh, Criterion, uh, Schillen, uh, uh, proof. You know, they got. All the top nailing barrels, and then if you don't want to prefit, or if you don't want to get a full prefit, and you want to do like a remage or savage style, they have both uh, Criterion and Savage for uh, Criterion and Shillin for the nut style barrels, um, and that's what I went with again. You know, I've been doing a lot of the nut style barrels. Uh, I will be spinning up some of my own barrels. You know, coming coming down the road. I've already done two of my own barrels, you know, when I was apprenticing. But 
the accuracy I have been seeing, the precision and accuracy I have been seeing out of these nut style barrels, it is so hard not to go with this style barrel. You set your headspace quick and easy, right from a vise. You don't even need a barrel vise, just a normal vise. Uh, I mean, it's so hard not to buy one of these nut style barrels because they, they just, you can spin off a caliber, put on a new caliber, I mean, within probably 25, 30 minutes. It, it's just, and if I would have got one of these the first or even second time and accuracy would have been awful, then I, you guys wouldn't have seen too many more on the channel. But as, it, as you've guys seen, the first one I bought was on my blue bench rest rifle. And that's a Criterion 6.5 Creedmoor. And that, you guys have seen a lot of .2 groups, .3, .5. I mean, when I'm not load development, uh, you know, developing load, I mean, it's .5 all day long or lower. If I'm... You know, the highest group that gun has ever shot during load development is still like an inch, an inch and, you know, 1.1 inches, somewhere around there. There might have been one or two a little higher than an inch, but you got to kind of expect that load development a little bit. Uh, but, you know, done with the rant, either way. I, I like the nut style barrel, so as you guys can tell, I got to... I've been going that route, and it's just hard not to because they 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 spin off quick, easily. You can change your head spacing, you can tighten your head spacing, you know, just just with a twist of a nut. And and it's kind of like the uh, self timing the muzzle brakes. You know, it's just it's just that easy, and they shoot incredibly good. So either way, uh, all the stuff you see here, I bought off Northland Shooter Supply. I put pretty much a full rifle together uh, with James. Uh, James? Yeah. James on uh, on the phone there. So I went with a, as you guys can already tell, a Savage Action. Now Savage is time proven. I mean, they are very smooth. Uh, you know, it's not the most smooth action out there, obviously, but they're time proven and reliable. Uh, I got a Savage Precision. Now this isn't the ultimate precision, but it's the Savage Precision action. Uh, Savage has like four types of actions, which actually I didn't know Savage actually sells a F class um, action. And if I would have known that, I might have gone that route because they they aren't incredibly expensive. Like. Uh, I don't know if they sell just the action if you do the F-Class. You can get an F-Class action um, and a bench rest style action. And I, I well, they actually sell a whole gun, a F-Class fitted gun and a bench rest fitted gun. From barrel, action, stock, it is a full F-Class, you know, uh, flat foreign, like four three, four, five inch wide, four in, I can't remember. But look it up on Savage's website. I didn't know they sold a full complete gun for F-Class and a full complete gun for Bentress. But I found that out, out after, and honestly, I don't think they sell just the F-Class action. Anyways, I would have had to buy, buy the whole gun. But even the, buying the whole gun is actually, <laughs> I think the whole gun is like two grand at the most or something like that. It's, it's pretty incredible. Now, I'd probably change the barrel on that, but, but either way, get, getting off subject here. So I went with a Savage Precision Action, um, and it came just like this from Northland Shooter Supply. Uh, it came with AccuTrigger. Now, I'm, I might change that trigger. Uh, Northland Shooter Supply sells a Rifle Basics uh, trigger they sell for Savage. And I am definitely going to be getting, it's called the Savage... Uh, Savage 2 trigger from Rifle Basics. It looks really good. Because uh, I like my bench style trigger. Uh, six ounces is perfect for me. Um, I, I got that set for about uh, between five and, and seven ounces. Uh, it pretty much breaks six ounces every time. Uh, but yeah, that Savage, let's see here, that Savage 2 trigger, Basics trigger, it's $160 which is really good for a trigger, 
and you can set it from four ounces to three pounds. That is ridiculous range. I mean, you can have the lightest of light with four ounces, and you can go all the way up to three pounds hunting trigger. trigger. So that's amazing. And, and if any of you guys have experience with basics, uh, rifle basics trigger, uh, let me know. I've heard good things. I haven't heard anything bad, but I haven't done a ton of searching. But to be all honest, Savage isn't quite like Remington, where they have a, like a ridiculous abundance of, of uh, you know different triggers. Remington style trigger with the trigger pin hangers uh, is just so common, and, and everybody sells a trigger for that. Savage don't really have that backing for triggers, so I've only seen probably four or five different triggers throughout. Uh, you know on the internet that are really you know nice triggers uh, that you can get down really low in, in uh, pull weight so yeah also I bought the here yeah. okay well here let me go through the full uh, what came with the savage action so it came with you know what you would get with the gun because that's what Northland Shooter, Shooters Fly does is with a lot of these Remington actions and savage actions they just take them off existing guns. Now, they're not used actions. The only you know bullet through these actions are the you know the proof, uh, the pr proof round, and whatever the factory, whatever Savage shot through, um, through the gun for testing. But you'll get that with almost any action, uh, unless you're buying straight up Defiance or, or any gun that you. If you buy a brand new gun, there's been five or six or seven or eight rounds fired through it. So. It came with your standard standard booklet. Uh, it is a 110 precision, or sorry, yeah, a Savage 110 precision action, short action. It came with your standard really, really good uh, lock <laughs> that everybody just throws to the side or maybe even in the garbage. Let's see here, what else did it come with? It came with a bottom uh, your bottom, your bottom metal or plastic in this case, but this uh, this is the bottom piece and uh, and your Savage mag come with your Savage mag and your your bottom metal to a Savage 110. Come with the trigger guard and comes with the adjustment tool for the uh, trigger. Now. Savage's Accu Trigger, I think, goes from. Oh, I should have had this ready. I can't remember. I, I think it's like two pounds. I don't know if they even say maximum pull weight. Yeah, they, they don't say. It just says turn it this way to you know lessen the tension and blah blah blah. Yeah, clockwise to for maximum trigger pull and minimum is counterclockwise. So yeah. They don't really say uh, what it is, which I'll, I I got a tester. I will end up testing it, but so that's what you get um, in the uh, if you buy an action through Northland Shooter Supply is right here. Let me make sure you guys can see all that. Yeah, okay, you guys are good. Uh, it, it's that right here. Right? You know, you get your bottom metal, your magazine, your trigger guard, your action. Uh, now, I think you can get these through Northland Shooter Supply without the trigger, uh, just the action. Uh, I think you can even get just the bolt. Another company that is really good is the JA Rifle Works or JA. The one I bought my trigger pins for the 22 Creedmoor build, the Remington. They sell a lot of this stuff as well. Uh, just the bolt, bolt heads. Full actions with trigger, they, they sell all of that. So yeah, that's what I went with. Hopefully I don't regret it. I, I don't think I will. I mean, I would have loved to have a, you know, nice, you know, fully, you know, custom action, but, you know, I, I got to kind of spread the, the money around a little bit, and, and Savage is a quality action. They, they really are. They, they're very smooth feeding, you know, very quality action. Now, obviously, I'm not going to need that. I'm not going to need the bottom metal or the the magazine or the trigger, you know, uh, 
the trigger guard. You're not going to need all that stuff, but. So, also, I ordered through Northland Shooter Supply the Trude, uh, the Trude Barrel Nut and the Fully Trude Recoil Lug uh, from Northland Shooter Supply. And they offer that as well. But a Fully Trude re Recoil Lug and a, and a Trude. Now, these are Trude to the Barrel, um, Trude Recoil Lug, Trude Barrel Nut, and, and all that. So that's what I went with first. You know, you can make a really crappy, you know, <laughs> I, I don't can't really think of a really crappy action, but uh, a really bad action shoot pretty damn good with a with a quality barrel. Um, also for the action, I went with just a, a set of Weaver rails right for right now. Uh, I have an MDT 20 MOA rail coming. Uh, I'm going to use this for now because the order got messed up uh, with MDT. I ordered a yeah a 110 base, but a um, Savage Axis base came. Now I, I tried pairing it up, and, and, and the screw holes are different, so I wasn't. I was just going to use it if it if it worked. But uh, so from MDT, I have a 20 MOA uh, base coming, but I'm just going to use the Weaver base for now. This is a 20 MOA uh, Savage 110 base. All right, let's move to the next item. All right, the next thing I bought from Northland Shooter Supply was the barrel. Uh, by the way, the, the whole build isn't from Northland Shooter Supply. Um, so I bought the Action Barrel um, and Foreign Weight for the build. I actually got the stock base and another piece, a, a surprise piece from MDT. Yeah, from MDT. So I bought four items, or three items from Northland Shooter Supply and the rest from MDT. And to be all honest, I should have went with the whole build through Northland Shooter Supply because uh, the stock was actually back ordered uh, for, I, I ended up waiting two weeks. They say eight to ten weeks, but I got it within like two weeks. So it wasn't that bad, but Northland Shooter Supply had almost all of this that I'm about to show you guys in stock right there, and I could have got it shipped to me with, with the action and, and, and all that. Uh, well, action had to go to the FFL, but, uh, you know, it arrived right pretty much at the same time. But So it was my bad for not getting the whole thing through Northland Shooter Supply. And they did ask if I wanted to call MDT and cancel, but it had already been a week. Uh, that went by, so I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm just, I'll wait. Uh, no sense in, you know, trying to cancel through MDT and, and all that stuff. So, Northland Shooter Supply, I got a barrel. Um, and this is the true um, barrel nut uh, for, set, uh, for Criterion. Uh, sorry. For Shillin. So now this is a Shillin Select Match. I went with Shillin one more time because I haven't tried Shillin Select Match. So I have a Criterion match on my bench rest. I have a Shillin match for the 22 Creedmoor. And this is going to be a Shillin Select Match, which is basically what F Class and bench rest people buy. It is the top quality, the best. You know, concentricity, uh, chamber, straightness, everything. The, the best of the best coming out of uh, Schillen goes to the Select match, match version. The only other barrel manufacturer that I haven't really tried yet is Bartline or Brox. I have tried Criterion now. They shoot lights out. A regular Schillen match barrel I'm, I'm testing right now. This is Select Match from Schillen, and I've tr I got a Krieger uh, that shoots lights out on, on my AR. So, those are, I haven't tried a proof. To be all honest, in my opinion, proof is just, they're overpriced. Uh, just because they got some popularity, man, they, they, I mean, $900 for a barrel, I'm sorry. Uh, I will promise you a proof barrel will not shoot better than a 
Brooks or a Bartline or a Criterion or Schillen or Krieger or, or any of them. They just got really popular and you know that's for their carbon fiber nine nine hundred and thirty something dollars but but even their non-carbon fiber barrels I personally don't like carbon fiber barrels I, I will never buy one uh, I, I may test one out down the road but I, I personally don't like them uh, I have seen some you know bad things with with heat they they disperse heat better but they also tend to throw shots as they heat up is what I have seen and I've seen it not just on one occasion you know I'm not that type of guy see it once and be like oh you know it's garbage you know uh, carbon fiber barrels aren't garbage they just the ones I have seen so far when they get hot they even even a bull barrel they tend to throw shots like on the fourth fifth sixth or you know whatever once it starts heating up so maybe the seventh eighth ninth shot when it is hot they tend to throw shot is what I have seen I'm not saying every uh, everyone does that but the three carbon fiber barrels from proof I have seen or, or two were from proof one was from uh, what was that other brand I can't remember uh, yeah you know, you get a decent group going, and then once the barrel got hot, it disperses heat better because of carbon fiber, and you know, lightens it up, all fine and dandy. But when the barrel does get hot, it it throws shots. So that's what I've seen. I personally want to test it firsthand. Um, that was just uh, my my buddy's rifle. We shoot together uh, quite a bit, so like. He changed from carbon fiber because of that reason, and that's what we kept seeing. Uh, now I want to try one on my own rifle as well, just to, you know, just to see. But boy, I hate spending nine hundred dollars on a barrel that, uh, you know, that throws shots after seven or eight. Now a lot of people are probably gonna, you know, tell me different things, and, and I I do believe you probably can get a carbon fiber that don't throw shots I'm not saying you, you absolutely can't but but what what I have seen you know so far a lot of carbon fiber now they dissipate heat quick, quicker so they cool down a lot quicker all three carbon fiber barrels I have seen and shot with did it so that's why I came to that conclusion um, which I just thought was really weird so that's the barrel, that's the action, the lug, recoil lug, and the nut. That all came from uh, Northland Shooter Supply. And we're gonna start putting that together. Also, I bought a, that's the other thing that came from Northland Shooter Supply, is uh, a, a set of weights. So that's what we got going. Now this is a select match shillin' bull inch 250 down to one inch on the muzzle which um, on Schillen's, Schillen's website basically that or, or Northland Shooter Supply uh, that's categorized as the bull, bull contour. But at the 26 inch it's at one inch or one inch 25 um, on the 26 inch. At 28 I think it's a little less an inch 13 or something like that at the, at the muzzle. Uh, I wanted to go with a full truck axle <laughs> an inch 250 straight but you can't really get that through through Northland Shooter Supply like that so yeah one thing I got to do to this barrel is I got a muzzle break I did get it threaded I usually don't thread the end of my barrels just because I'm never gonna get a suppressor um, I'm all set with you know doing the tax stamp stuff and but when I get to the bigger calibers I do like throwing on muzzle brakes like 6.5, 22 Creedmoor, didn't need it, so I'm never going to thread a muzzle um, on those lower calibers. But this is, so I, I didn't tell you what this is. So it's a select match, Schillen select match, 308. Yes, 308. I went all out, and I've been promising you guys a lot of 308 content on the channel. And I personally love 308. But like I've told you guys before, I've never owned a fully custom match 308 or match barrel. 
only 308s I've ever owned is AR-10, obviously, and a, a, a bunch of different 308 hunting rifles, just sporter, sporter barrel hunting rifles. So I been promising you guys 308, so I went all out and went with the 308. I think it's a FTR chamber design, which basically is a longer throat, allows me to um, set them out a little bit further. It is a 1 in 10 twist, ratchet rifle 4 groove bull barrel. That is the whole specs on this barrel, uh, 26 inches. I was going to go with uh, 30, but I was going to have to wait. Uh, they didn't have a 30 inch um, uh, bull or uh, bull barrel at, at the time so one in ten I was I almost went with one in eight twist but one in ten does all the way up to 210 you can even get 220 grains through it I'm not going to be shooting heavier than that on 308 so I, I'm not not worried about it I don't think there's any sense in going with the one in eight twist I know you can get heavier for 308 but I don't really need to shoot that heavy. 220 is heavy enough for 308, and 1 in 10 twist will easily stabilize that, no problem. I went to the Burger website, made sure, um, checked out their uh, 200, 200 grain, 210 grain, and 220 did the stabilization chart went down to uh, moderate stability. Uh, everything else was up in the top end, uh, you know, because if you've never used the Burger uh, twist calculator or stability calculator, uh, you've got a top end section which is fully stable, you got the middle uh, end which is moderate stability, and then you got the end which is unstable. So the 220s out of a 1 in 10 twist uh, FTR chamber was at the high end of moderate, uh, moderate stable stability. So I should be able to stable 220s no problem. Now I'm pretty much going to be sticking around the 175 to 210 area anyways, uh, but I, I may go a little heavier. Uh, I, I always like to see what the max is, like I did with the Howa we had. Uh, I like to see what the max is of stability before it starts keyholing. That's, that's kind of fun to do to be all honest. So that's the action barrel, recoil lug, nut. I guess I'll go through the rest of the components and then start putting it together. I was gonna show show a piece, to put it, you know, start putting it together. Um, but I'll probably just show off all the pieces first, and then um, and then yeah, we'll go from there. Start putting the build together. All right, the next thing I bought. I went, so there's a few reasons why I went with uh, this chassis. One, I wanted to compare it to my field chassis, uh, see what the actual difference was, because on, on the computer, they look almost identical, but when you read the description, you can tell it has a lot more you know, creature kind of comforts or just a lot more... Uh, compatibility or, or support with uh, extra things. The field stock is pretty bare bones. You can't get a lot of... Now, the field stock's pretty damn new, so they may add components you can get with it, but as of right now, the field stock is pretty much can't get any weights for it. You can obviously uh, buy some side mount, uh, or I mean, uh, M-Lock uh, exterior weights, but they don't have any uh, internal weights or, or, you know, anything extra with it. So I ended up going with the MDT XRS chassis system and if you guys go on MDT and look the XRS just by looks looks almost identical to the field stock. You can see obviously some differences but we'll go over the actual differences because there is quite a bit. Because uh, when I bought the field I told you guys it's pretty much the XRS and by looks it, it they look very similar, but the backing behind the MDT XRS is a lot more. They, they sell a lot more uh, extra stuff to it. Alright, so 
I got the MDT XRS chassis. It comes with uh, your vertical grips. That's one thing the field stock you can't get or you can't do. Uh, you can't change the you know the angle of the grip. It is what it is. Uh, it, on it is the little bit more uh, slanted but rubberized grip. I kind of like the texture of this rubber rubberized grip. Uh, grip. I was hoping you could actually put the rubber on the on the uh, vertical grip, but I don't think uh, I don't think you can. I, I'll check. But so it comes with length of pull spacers and uh, your vertical grip and obviously your chassis comes with a piece of paper telling you a lot of the extras you can get so you can get the arcer adapter for the XRS you can get rings and a brake obviously that's not just for the XRS uh, and they tell you kind of how to put it together so we will go through that later you get a sticker uh, MDT throws a, a bunch of stickers in with just about anything you buy from them you get a sticker I bought just a, a set of weights one time and uh, yeah <laughs> we got stickers with that which I love I, I like I like uh, swag I like when companies throw in a bunch of extra swag or you know like I love MDT's uh, chamber flags and you know they work really good they slip in really quick and easy that's the back just tells you everything, uh, anything, everything you can do with it. Like the pull, one inch, cheek riser height, an inch and a half. And it starts at 3.9 pounds. And that is one thing I noticed with the difference between the field stock and this is um, the field stock is aluminum bedded just, uh, just in the front and towards the back like they have separate beds the, the XRS is fully aluminum bedded from from front to back uh, aluminum from here uh, turn this around here aluminum from here all the way up to here past the recoil lug the XRS is only from here to here, um, uh, sorry, the uh, the field, yeah, it's only from here to here. It's just the action bedded, and really that's what counts. That's why the field can still be really accurate. Um, but, you know, the XRS from fore end, it's aluminum all the way, it's a fully alumin, aluminum skeleton, and it comes all the way down into the buttstock as well. Um, has an aluminum inner chassis um, and a fully aluminum bedded um, and, and that's kind of why I went this route I, I don't mind like I said Boyd stocks are really nice but to get the full potential out of Boyd stocks they say you you can just drop it in and get great accuracy and you absolutely can but to get the full potential you need to bed it fully bed it I've noticed extremely good accuracy right you know just right out of the box putting uh, uh, putting your you know just dropping your action in and it's bedding is really not necessary on a, on a chassis so the other thing I got that's coming in a week is the full forend weight uh, that is the difference now it's another thing you'll see on the channel is if you have a XRS that earlier than 2001 you have to buy uh, this internal um, aluminum piece to accept if you're going to do the XRS forend weight and that's why I say the field stock may later on come with stuff as well because the XRS to begin with didn't have a forend weight uh, didn't have a lot of the compatibilities um, or didn't have the accessories in the beginning like the ACC Elite chassis and, and all, all that good stuff but now the XRS has a lot of accessories that you can get for it uh, but anything after 2001 it is a fully aluminum inner chassis now so 
you can get uh, all the accessories and don't have to worry about it. But if it's before 2001, if you have an XRS before 2001, uh, sorry, 2021, you have to buy this internal aluminum piece up in the front and then you can get uh, a drop in, uh, the, the drop in XRS 4N weight. Uh, it, I mean, the, the early model XRS still has the M lock on the side and all that, but it don't have this aluminum uh, 4N front piece. Now, eventually, that's another thing I'm going to buy for this eventually down the road, is the Archer slot that you attach to the bottom of this. This aluminum 4N piece fully accepts the Archer rail uh, attachment, uh, bolts right, mates right up to it perfectly, you don't got to do anything special. And that's the other thing uh, this 4N, uh, aluminum 4N piece does, is uh, lets you mate up the Archer rail, quick and easy and the forehand weight quick and easy. Other than that, if you get an XRS, like I said, after 2021, it's all set up, ready to go. Everything's, yeah, everything's good to go. So that's coming in the mail. Um, it is on its way uh, very soon. Now that's another piece I should have got through Northland Shooter Supply, but I didn't. Uh, the only piece I couldn't get through North, Northland Shooter Supply is the next piece I'm about to show you guys. Other than that, I could have had the whole rifle sent to me, ready, pretty much ready to build, right from Northland. And that's my fault. I didn't do that. I went through MDT, which I kind of wanted to give my support to them. But honestly, if you're getting it through Northland Shooter, Shooter Supply, you're still supporting MDT because they get stuff through MDT. Now, the second thing I bought, now this is the piece I couldn't get through Northland Shooter Supply. Um, the only piece I couldn't get through them. Uh, I would have had to wait for this one either way if I did get everything through Northland Shooter Supply. So, the other thing I got through MDT is this. And I don't know if it's going to look good. In my mind, it's going to. And I, the other reason why I did this is because um, it's another XRS it actually, it, this is the main reason I went with the XRS. The two main reasons is technically I wanted to compare it to the field stock because they look the same. I wanted to see what the actual real, real world differences were between the XRS and the field stock. And because they have this accessory for the XR, XRS and I think it's going to look amazing. I don't see too many people with it. I don't know if that's because it's not going to look good or, and, and to be all honest, as long as I like it, that's all I care about. You know, if other people think it's ugly, whatever. Um, but I think it's going to look really good. We will see. It is the full XRS wood, um, wood accent pieces for the XRS chassis. So it replaces it replaces your side pieces, it replaces your grip, it replaces your cheek piece, and that's it. Now I almost went with FDE to do this kit on, but to be all honest, I think the black is going to look better. A little bit of black and wood I think will look really good. Now we'll get it all together and check it out putting it on just like this right now, it, it, I like it. It looks really good. So that's the other piece I bought for the XRS, the other accessory piece, and I am super excited to get that thing in there. Uh, I, I love wood, I love the traditional style uh, look on a stock, I love the traditional wood style look on a stock. Uh, that's kind of why I don't like the ACC Elite and the uh, ESS or whatever because it's 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 so far away from traditional looking stocks. I, I don't really like I don't really like that. I like the XRS in the field where you have a chassis system still in a lot of the new age comforts with the cheek riser and vertical grip and you know. M lock down the side and, and, and all that, uh, you know, 
It has all of that, but it still has the old traditional style, you know, kind of look as well to it. It's not fully skeletonized, you know, buttstock and, you know, it, it's, I, I like, I like the, I like the mix between both, traditional and chassis. I love it. And that's why, another reason why I got the wood, to get it a little bit more towards the traditional style. And uh, we'll see how it looks. I think it's going to look great. Uh, so, the differences between the field stock and XRS. One is a barricade stock. The XRS has a barricade stock. That's really nice. Other thing is the XRS has QD cups built right in, QD flush cups built right into the chassis. The other difference between the XRS and the field, I notice, is you can change the palm swell uh, from vertical to slanted, uh, a little bit rubberized. Uh, you can change the grip up quite a bit. Other thing is a lot more accessories to it. Like I said, fore end weight, arcer. Um, now. Arca rail I can put on the bottom of that one too, but it's not meant for it specifically. It's just a, you know, second hand, or whatever, Arca M-Lock mounting Arca rail. The Arca rail you buy for the XRS is, is actually made for the XRS. Uh, it's got, you know, it's got your bolt pattern and, and everything ready to go. XRS has an internal weight package you can get for it. Only thing you can do for the field stock is external. Uh, a couple external. Oh, that's the last piece I got for the uh, XRS, anyways, is the MDT um, external exterior weights. So, yeah, that's the only thing you can do with the field stock is get external weights, and that's it. Now, like I said later on, the field stock make you know, they may develop something to put internal weights in it. But the field stock is not meant for that really, to be all honest. If you're if you're really coming down to it, the field stock is the tra way more traditional, you know, hunting style. Now, they say you can compete with it and you absolutely can. The the field stock is still, you know, compatible with you know, all the footprints and you can slap something in there and definitely PRS with it. It has, it has a little less, you know, it has a narrower forend than the XRS, but it's still a pretty flat uh, base on it. And, you know, you could definitely compete with it. But the field stock is definitely geared more towards hunting. It's lighter weight. It's, you know, a little more traditional than even the XRS is. And uh, yeah, it's it's going to be geared more towards hunting. So that's the biggest differences with it. But that's one thing I, why I went with this. I just wanted to go over the differences for you guys. Because in the beginning when I bought the field stock, I told you guys it's basically the XRS. Uh, just cheaper. And it's, it's not. Uh, you know, the looks are very similar. They are when you combine them. And I will put the two together uh, once I get these built and, and show you. But they are quite a bit different. Uh, the forend, as is, is a lot wider on the XRS, which I love. I like wide, uh, wide forends. Now, the whole reason why I got the, the, the field stock, MDT field stock, is because I wanted a chassis style hunting rifle. Uh, most of my rifles I'm building now, I can't even take hunting, they're just way too heavy. The field stock is that gun that I can, you know, I'll probably take the bipod off it obviously, put a smaller 3 to 9 uh, Bushnell on it instead of my uh, instead of my Match Pro, you know, that's a massive scope. A couple things I could just do quickly and make that my, you know, hunting rifle. So that's, that's the reason why I went with that. And also, it's it's nice in price range. You know, it's two ninety nine, it's three hundred bucks for that field stock chassis. That is amazing. That that's a really good quality chassis for for the price. So that's it, guys. I, I pretty much have everything in front of. You. Oh no, there is one more item. I got a break because it's three oh eight. Now. To me, 308 
kicks more than I like for precision. I can handle 308, but I think once you get up to about 308 kick, you can start developing, you know, flinch problems and all that, you know. It's it's a hard enough kick to make it a little bit harder to shoot. My 6x Creedmoor, 22 Creedmoor, uh, you know, those are perfect guns and barely any kick, you know, but 308 I consider, you know, to shoot it really well and to get teeny groups like we're going to try and, try and do, uh, I definitely want to break. And that's why I got all the weights for it as well. I want a nice heavy flat forend, uh, heavy gun with a nice muzzle break and it should tame, uh, you know, it, it should tame the uh, recoil no problem. So I got a break. It is a, uh, what is the brand of this break? It is a Red Hawk? I think a Red Hawk break? Uh, like the company so far, they look really good. It has a three port muzzle break. It is angled on this one. Uh, the first port is the biggest port. Um, they have it so it's, uh, you know, a little bit triangle shaped and a lot more opened up. They are angled backwards a little bit and out to the side. And it does have uh, a few uh, timed uh, top ports as well. Nothing on the bottom, which I, I don't want anything on the bottom. But it has a few... Uh, time for the top. Now this break is definitely smaller than my barrel so that is one thing I'm going to have to do later on. Uh, the first time out on the range it's probably going to look a little goofy but uh, uh, because I'm not going to mess with the barrel yet I want to shoot it and get it get it uh, but that's one thing I'm going to do to the barrel is taper the barrel just a little bit down on the front. Uh, so it uh, mates up with this muzzle brake really good. I think the muzzle brake itself is nine. Let me see here. So yeah, it's eight. Not uh, so it's eight ninety is the uh, OD of this of this brake. So I'm gonna wait on tapering the barrel, and the reason why I want to wait is because I want to try this brake and you know and just try it out. It'll look goofy for a while with a you know with a brake that. You know, a lot, not a lot smaller. Like I said, the OD of the barrel is 1.025, basically one inch, and this is uh, basically 0 0.900 is the OD of the of the actual break. So it's not a whole lot smaller, but but it is. You're going to notice there's going to be a decent sized step. But the reason why I don't want to taper this now is because I may go with a different break down the road and. Uh, the one I'm thinking about is either Masterpiece Arms Break or um, the one I'm probably going to get is the MDT, uh, MDT 3 or 4 port break. I can't remember. It's 3 or 4. But that one looks really good. Um, and that one's 930, I think. So if I taper this one down now to this one, uh, then the break I get from... MDT is going to be bigger than the taper and I can't really add material to, to a barrel. I could cut it off and crown it and, and you know and, and redo the taper but no, I'm good. I'm good with that. I'd rather look goofy for a while, try out this break and uh, wait until I order the MDT later on. And to be all honest I don't think you guys are going to be able to notice from the camera anyways how big of a step it actually is because it's not that big. So that's it. That's all the pieces I got. For scope, I'm going to go with an Arkin. It is going to be the one off my bench rest gun because I got a new scope for the bench rest gun I got. It is a uh, bench rest style Weaver uh, fine line. Here, let me, let me show you guys the box. So it's that one right there. It is the Weaver T 
T-Series rifle scope. That's the model. It is 36 by 40. So it's 36 straight power. Uh, 8 MOA dot reticle. And that's a pure bench rest style. Because I'm thinking about competing later on. There's a, there's a couple clubs around me. Well, quite a ways away from me. But, you know, an hour and a half, two hour drive. But I'm thinking about competing in bench rest eventually. Uh, the 22 bench rest and the center fire. And I wanted to get a nice bench rest scope style uh, style scope for for that rifle. Um, so because I bought that, it freed up my Arkin to put on this build. But uh, yeah, so that's what it is right there. T series rifle scope bench rest in silhouette. Now I don't think we have any silhouette around here. I'd love to compete in that as well. Uh, I wa I've been watching a lot. I've watched bench rest for a good 15, 15 years now, but I've been watching a lot of silhouette recently too, and, and I love silhouette shooting. It looks so fun. But either way, I I'm eventually going to get up and uh, start competing in the bench rest competition uh, near me like this is about two hours away uh, at the rifle range there and I can't remember what town it is but but yeah it, it's about two hours for me so it is a bit of a drive but I really want to compete and I love bench rest and all it just all it entails and that's my style it either be F class or bench rest that I would shoot and there is no F-Class around me. The only thing that I have near me is uh, pistol, pistol competitions, bench rest center fire, and bench rest 22. And that's basically it. That's all I got around here. Uh, which really is a shame. I wish NR, uh, NRL Hunter was around here. I wish PRS was around here. You know, I'd compete in all of those if it was around here. But my nearest PS, PRS match or NRL Hunter match is clear in I think New Hampshire has a PRS match but yeah Massachusetts New Hampshire and that's a six hour drive for me which I guess ain't too bad but it'd only be one match I could go to you know but that would be one thing I, I, I wish I wish I had a lot more uh, competitive stuff around here uh, matches but next year I'm gonna try and get into the bench rest uh, community up there at that rifle range and start competing there and, and see what I can't learn see what I can't do you know I'm gonna suck for a long time but I want I want to learn that style and and go from there so yeah that's that's what I got for a scope I just uh, basically took it off the bench rest and bought a new scope for my bench rest because like I said, I wanted a a fully bench rest reticle. Uh, you should see that reticle and that weaver. It is extremely thin lined full cross um, reticle. I mean, it is thinner than a hair. <laughs> it's it's so small, and, and I like that. I like that. So. Those are all the pieces to the rifle. I don't think I have anything else hiding. The only thing that you guys haven't seen is the internal XRS uh, weight. But that will be here within about a week. No, no sorry. Uh, about four more days. And I figured we could start putting it together now. Getting the build going. Now this is going to be a long uh, video. Uh, hopefully you guys watch it. You know, a lot of people don't like long videos. You, just, you know, a lot of people just click right off it as soon as they see, uh, you know, an hour. Or I don't know what this is going to be, but it's probably going to be an over over an hour long video. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people see that and they just click right off. But hopefully you guys watch it. I appreciate, you know, you guys if you would subscribe and, and all that good stuff. Like I said, I'm not monetized and I'm not doing this channel to, you know, to to earn money and, and, and all that, you know, I, I'm realistic, you know, to grow a YouTube channel and start earning money on YouTube is very slim. It's not easy to do, very slim. 
I'm just doing it basically as a hobby. Uh, I love shooting. I love reloading. I'm very good at, uh, you know, pretty good at both. Um, probably better at reloading than, than uh, shooting, but uh, my shooting skills are getting up there, though. I, I'm getting impressed. I'm rusty because of the winter, but, but the end of last summer, I'll tell you, I, I, was, I was getting pretty damn good. And that's another reason why I want to compete in bench rest, because I just want to get better. But, yeah, so this build video was going to be quite long. Uh, this first section is just all the components. I'm going to bring you along the ride of the build as much as I can. Like I said, YouTube rules will, won't will allow me to show you putting that barrel right up to that action and screwing it. You know what I mean? i, I got to kind of do before, after, but I'll do that and uh, hopefully YouTube don't mind. And uh, you guys get the picture anyways, you know. If you don't know how a barrel actually goes on and how to headspace, write to me. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys. But this is probably the last um, barrel nut barrel I'm going to get. Uh, from here on out, I'm going to start uh, turning my own barrels. Uh, you know, I got, I got my lathe and all that. And um, the real sad thing is I no longer have my gunsmith apprentice. Yeah, that... That really sucks. He he passed away. So um, I got about two good years of training with him, and now I'm kind of on my own and on my way. Now he left me all of his uh, manuals, and I mean I got probably a half a library full of uh, <laughs> of all gun manuals, and all the way back from old Mausers to to new Remington style actions and you know, how to put a full Mauser together, and, you know, all that good stuff. So he left me a lot uh, to keep reading up on and all that, but I got a good two years of apprenticing from him. He taught me how to chamber, taught me how to... We first started off at, at just basic machining, because I'm, I'm not a machinist either. You know, I, I, I've never touched a lathe in my life, so he had to start from scratch, uh, it's not like I'm a machinist that's just trying to get into gunsmithing. I've never really done metal work to begin with. Other than cutting something with a, you know, cutting wheel. You know, cutting some metal up or exhaust pipe on car. You know what I mean? Just just that. that that's it. A lot of autom automotive stuff I, I've done, but that's it. So he was starting from scratch. And uh, so the first you know, year was teaching me the ins and out on a lathe and actual metal work and machining. Um, so that was amazing. Uh, I got a lot of knowledge from him and uh, I know my way around that lathe really well now. Obviously a shit ton I need to still learn. I mean, I'll be learning till I'm 90. Uh, you know, that's one thing I'll always understand is I'm not a know-it-all, <laughs> you know, I, I I know I suck compared to, you know, a guy that's been doing it for 50 years, and even the guy from 50 years still have stuff to learn, you know, with machining, that's one thing I've noticed is you never know it all, you, you never do, um, so yeah, and then the last year was him teaching me actually how to gunsmith, uh, I've spun up two of my own barrels now, uh, before he actually got really bad and passed away, I was able to actually chamber two barrels. I got through two at least. He got really weak towards the end, so I wasn't, you know, he wasn't able to, uh, we weren't, weren't able to get past two barrels, but in the other part, he wasn't able to really get into depth was stock making, because that's one thing he did. He did his own stock. All right, guys, got the action all propped up in the, action wrench and in the vise. Gonna put the recoil lug on and get the barrel all uh, torqued down and uh, head spaced. That is next. Alright guys, got this barrel torqued down. Um, I torque all my barrel nuts. Uh, I think Criterion says 45 I think Schillen or, or Savage they they say uh, 
45 to 50 uh, foot pounds and I've done that on my last three barrels and they're they're uh, they're not going nowhere so all right so here is a you're not gonna be able to read it either way but a Forrester go gauge 1.6300 all right so there's the go gauge all the way down no problem And here is a Forrester 308 no go gauge 1.634. Looks like they're about 4,000 between the two. And right there is your. That's as far as it goes down. Starts just a tad bit and it comes to a complete halt. I'm not going to push it any more than that. So, hard stop on the go, no go. And uh, firm, but easily, uh, you know, it's, yet again, it's going to be probably another tight head spacing, but. I'm only going to be uh, doing factory. I, I loosened this headspace up a little bit uh, compared to the 22 Creedmoor. Because 22, I'm absolutely only going to be shooting hand loads. Uh, I may try one box of uh, factory ammo throw it, but that's pretty much a hand load only gun for me. And uh, the 308, I, I can get, I mean, 308 has tons of. Uh, factory ammo everywhere so I, I may run some factory through it here and there but the 308 still is going to be pretty much hand load only as well but so uh, has a teeny bit of drag on the uh, go and honestly it's not much because even just the uh, without anything in there has you know has a little bit of resistance to it so so yeah a uh, little bit of drag on the go, and no go is a hard stop. I put a piece of clear tape on the go, which is about two thousandths. Uh, I put clear scotch tape on it, and it came to a hard stop on that as well. So I am right about two thousands head spacing somewhere around there and yeah i'm pretty damn happy with that so that is the barrel torqued down to specs uh like i said i got it about 45 uh 45 foot pounds and uh let's get the rest of it put together all right guys got the barrel on torqued down head space correct Got the rail on, uh, temporary rail until the MDT one comes in. Uh, all right, let's get this thing in the chassis. All right, guys, got it in the chassis. Got my bipod on it. I don't know if I'm gonna be keeping a bipod on this. This has got a such a flat uh, forend on it that. I may just use this as a bag or bench gun uh, with my front rest and a rear bag. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'll probably, I'm going to keep the bipod on it for a while because I can still use it as a bag gun, you know, and just, just rest it a little bit further past the, uh, the bipod. And it adds a little bit of weight, and I want all the weight I can get on this gun. It's going to be strictly a bench gun. So, hell yeah. Let's get you guys a top view. 
So that is all set up so far and on to the next step which will be brake, scope, and accessories. And I'll put the um, inner rail in a couple days when it comes in because uh, you don't have to take the barrel off when you uh, install the XRS internal end weight you just you just slip it in and screw it down so all right guys next step Alright guys, got the build done. I think it looks freaking gorgeous. Muzzle brake is all timed. Um, and as you guys can see, you can't really notice it that it's not tapered. Uh, now if I get you guys closer, you guys will see it a little bit there. So, but honestly, you don't notice it unless you're hovering right above the brake. I'll deal with that for now. Uh, trust me, I'm, I'm either going to taper it or uh, not or. I am going to be getting the MDT muzzle brake, which is pretty much the same size as that barrel. Uh, a little bit smaller, so I'll still have to taper it a teeny bit, but that's fine. I'm not not worried about it. But I'm not going to taper it right now because... You know, if this brake works really good and I like it, then I might just stick with this. Because this is a uh, a pretty expensive brake. It's a $70 brake, so it's not super cheap. But uh, when it comes down to muzzle brakes, I guess it's cheap. But, you know, the MDT is like 300 bucks. But uh, it's a Makata or... I said Red Hawk, but uh, it's not a Red Hawk. It's a. It starts with an M. M Makata brake or or something like that. I, I can't remember what it's how uh, how it's pronounced, but I'll try and put something on. Uh, I'll try and put something on the website. Or I'll probably I'll try and put a link down in the description. That way you guys can check it out. It's like seventy. Dollars six nine ninety nine I think and that's a 30 cal break so should be good to go now one thing I noticed that kind of bummed me out a little bit with with uh, with the whole thing is adding those wood pieces which is kind of a kick in the face I can't add any external weights because when you <laughs> add the wood pieces, it takes your M lock away on the forend, as you guys can see. So, that kind of sucks. I do kind of see why they do that, though, because if you had, you know, if you had external uh, weights, you know, going down the side of that, then you wouldn't really see the wood at all. So,. Uh, so I understand, and now I'm really glad I got the forend weight for this gun. Um, I say really glad, but this freaking gun is heavy. It is, I don't have a scale to weigh it, but it is freaking heavy as hell. It's probably 10 times, or 5 to 10 times heavier than my 22 Creedmore, and my bench gun... I don't know, I'll have to hold them up side by side, but I think it's even heavier than my bench gun. We'll, we'll see. Um, I'll hold them up side by side, but this gun is ridiculously heavy, which I wanted. You know, I wanted a super heavy rifle. 
Uh, it's 308. I want as much weight as I can to tame that recoil, you know, and, and I know a lot of you are going to be saying, oh, freaking, you know, it's only 308, it's not much recoil. I'm telling you, you know, try and shoot smallest group you can. I know this gun ain't going to shoot in the zeros, but I'm just saying if you're trying to shoot ex as small as you can, every bit of recoil taken away is good. It's hard to shoot, you know, a 300 win mag into, you know, the twos or ones or, you know, it's, it's really hard to do. Anything with recoil, the more recoil you have, it's, you know, the harder it is to get smaller groups because it's just another variable you're adding in, you know, to widen those groups up. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's basically it. 308 is not the softest shooting round. It's not the heaviest shooting round. I fully understand. I can handle 308 recoil. I'm not saying that. Just saying 308 is not super soft shooting. And to be all honest, 308 30-06 is kind of my limit on uh, on precision shooting. I wouldn't really want to go up any higher than that. If I'm going up to like 300 PRC, I want a you know 30 36 inch barrel i mean just just weighted right down down you know 30 40 40 pounds you know like the elr chassis and stuff yeah i want it as heavy as i can get so i'm happy with this i think it looks really good with the wood and i'm glad i got the black stock instead of the fde uh someone in the comments in uh at mdt said they got the FDE and thought it would match better with the wood. I don't know. I, I, I disagree. I think the black and the wood match way better. Uh, I don't know. I, to me, the FDE, you know, with that wood, the wood would just kind of blend in a little bit. I know the wood's a little bit different color, but it's, yeah, I don't know. So, I'm glad I got the black for it. I put that in my head and I'm like, because I, if I didn't do the wood kit, I was going to order an FDE gun and I'm really glad I didn't and chose the wood because not only do I have a, you know, gun already FDE, the field stock there, but, you know, I don't really need a second FDE gun, but also I'm glad I found that wood kit because, I don't know, I like it, I like it a lot. So the only thing I have left to put on this thing is the internal four weight, uh, four end weight, which awesome. Give it a little bit more. At, sitting as is, this gun is super heavy. So that makes me happy because once I get that, I think the four end weight adds a pound, uh, two pounds, or two and a half pounds, or one and a half pounds. I can't remember. I gotta look. But oh, sorry guys. Uh, so yeah, it's super heavy as is, adding that weight is just going to make it heavier and I should be able to shoot this gun really well. I had to, I can't wait for the MDT, uh, that is the, la the one other thing I got to add is the MDT uh, 20 MOA rail, because this Weaver 20 MOA rail, I had to put taller rings on it, for some reason this weaver rail in the arc and optic the the you know the middle part of the optic you know right there was rub was it was teeter tottering it was sit, setting on the middle of the optic before the low you know the rings and they are low you know i had low rings on them uh 0.9 something um inch I, and these ones are 1.2 inch. So I think these ones are mediums. So I had to, luckily I had a second pair of Arkin rings because uh, I use, you know, some of my loyalty points to get rings in a bubble level. And so I've had these medium sized rings for a while because I wasn't sure even on my bench rest gun when I put it on that, you know, which one it was gonna need. So I ordered uh, low and medium. Now you wanna try and get as low as you can just 
you know, just so it's a little bit better. But, you know, if you got a cheek riser, not that big of a deal. So, all in all, fit and finish. Love the chassis. Love the wood uh, accent kit to it. I don't know. I, I don't really have any complaints. Didn't have any problems like I did with the with the Remington action and the field stock going in. Uh, that mag fits perfectly. No, no, um, you know, stiff mag going in because if you guys remember correctly with the 22 Creedmoor build, um, I had four or five issues. I had to trim down the front action screw. I had to uh, sand the uh, yeah. I had to sand the mag so it you know goes in and out better. And maybe because I did sand the mag, it you know it fits the X uh, the XRS chassis even better. I don't I don't know, but to me it, it seems like it would have fit no matter what. Um, definitely more room. Oh, what other problems do I have in the Remington chassis? I, I, I can't remember, but I had no problems with this one. This XRS was perfectly, the Savage Action fit in there perfectly. No tinkering, no, you know, messing around, no, no, didn't have to bring out a single bit of sandpaper. <laughs> so... So yeah, I didn't change the length of pull. Uh, there is one more piece of wood I could have got, which I didn't even realize that until uh, later on. You can get spacers, wood spacers for the back. I didn't have to add any spacers. Uh, it comes with three extra spacers for length of pull. Just like the field stock, it, the way it came is pretty damn good for me. Uh, I may add one spacer on this one because my, my uh, I do have a good really good grip as of now but my finger does go past the trigger just a little bit so if I added one spacer I think I think it'd be just fine but yes uh, you can get wood uh, spacers to replace the ones in there and you'll have a little bit of wood on the on the back end uh, wood accent on the back end but I, I don't think I'll do that it, it's gonna add or add a minor uh, bit of wood at the back so so yeah uh, uh, once the fore end weight comes in, I'm going to be putting that in. Once the uh, MDT rail comes in, I'll be putting that on. And hopefully I can lower that scope a little bit. It's a little bit high, too high for my liking. I mean, honestly, it's not that bad. But, you know, I, I would like it a little bit lower. When it was on the bench rest gun, I had that. So, a piece of... Uh, Construction paper could go underneath, you know, probably four, five, six thousand, uh, well, probably about eight thousandths. Um, so it, it was close to the barrel. It never hit or anything, never rubbed, but yeah, it, it was close on the uh, bench rest rifle. So I'll have to get used to it. Well, what, what, like you said, once the rail comes in, I think I can go back down to the lower rings. Um, I'm not sure though. It is a different setup. Savage. Uh, Savage rail compared to a Remington rail is it, going to be a little different. So if I got to deal with the medium rings, I'm, I'm fine with that. Most people actually have to go to medium rings. So I was surprised when when I went uh, put that on my bench rest rifle. Uh, small rings fit pretty well. It was close, like I said, um, but fit good. So either way, I'll get used to the medium rings. I got two more things to put on this gun. And uh, we'll be good to go. We will start load development here coming up. Same thing. Got to get about 150, 200 rounds down down the barrel before we really get serious, um, you know, into load development. But we'll be doing that. That's one good thing about 308, though, is bullets are cheap. or cheaper than most other calibers. Um, so, and I have a back stock or not back stock, but I have a lot of uh, different kind of 30 caliber bullets. So, uh, Spear, Hornaday, uh, a bunch of Hornady bullets. Uh, so, so yeah. Uh, next we'll be seeing how she groups. I'm super excited for this one. Hoping, you know, 
hoping tight tight uh, groups. I can't imagine not. I mean, it is a select match shilling barrel. It is reserved for bench rest and F class. Not reserved. Anybody can buy them, but I mean, it, it's yeah, the select match is the best of the best of barrels. So if I can't get this to shoot, there's a problem. <laughs> So, alright guys, this is the new build. Uh, you'll be seeing it a lot more on the channel. Oh, that's one last thing, is the... I did like the rubber grip, vertical grip that the MDT came with, and when you put the wood on there, is no... They got, uh, they got a little texture on it, but no, um, no rubber or squishiness on it, and, and I like that, but... But the wood grip is fine. It's just a lot more smooth, you know, a little bit smooth. A lot more smooth, smoother than, um, you know, the one that came with it, the MDT. Uh, both the slanted and vertical grip that come with the XRS uh, are nice and, like, rubbery and squishy. So, very comfortable. But, honestly, that one, I could checker it. I, I could, you know, it is wood. I, I could checker it. And, uh, get a little bit more uh, texture to it. That's one thing I could do. But all right, guys, uh, you'll be seeing this a lot more on the channel. We'll we'll get everything. We'll start uh, loading for it. Seeing uh, seeing how small we can go with groups. All right, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. If you could subscribe, I'd appreciate it a lot. You know, hit the like button. That goes a long way as well. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.